Yeah, it, it, that song, it's ironic because most of, most of the time, as any songwriter will tell you, you, there's nothing like having a hit song with a great story behind it. And I have a few of those. Um, this one, my co-writer, Tim Nichols, really had it. He's, he's, the quote for this song, because the way it came about was one of those days we were literally just talking about a life thing, and one thing led to another, and we actually just came up with the hook right there in the room and everything. But his quote ended up being, uh, you know, it started off uh, like a day like any other and ended like a day like no other. So it's kind of one of those, um, one of those things. Um, when we wrote the song, um, uh, as, as I said in the book, um, we were talking about, we started, there was a friend of ours, uh, at the place I was writing, a friend of ours, I had a, what turned out being a misdiagnosis and everybody was talking about um, the fact that he had gotten a sex ray. One doctor was like, oh my God, there's something wrong. Uh, another doctor finally looked at it and said, no, there's nothing wrong. And, um, and that got us talking about like, man, you know, there are misdiagnoses and then there are people that actually get diagnoses and, um, you know, and, and the, every now and again, that rare exception of where somebody all of a sudden, you get kind of get in that bucket list mode as opposed to just kind of going home and pulling the curtains. And that's really inspirational. What an inspirational thing. I hope that, I hope it inspires me to do the same a little bit. Um, and so that, that that's kind of where that song came from. I demoed it. Bumped a song, put it on a demo. We wrote it like on a, t t I don't know, I don't know. I, I know I demoed it on a Thursday. We I mixed it, mon I mean I demoed it on a Friday. Mixed it Monday. Tim heard it and knew he was gonna cut it. In fact, he was he was getting ready for the CMA awards. I know he was he was he heard it in the dressing room. So that would have been Wednesday. So within five days of it was just kind of one of those. It was just real meant to be. And it was a funny thing with that too, that one of the the girls of the other publisher, one of Tim's publishers, said, "Did you know that? Did you know that Tim's uh, father? Because I knew his father was ill." He goes, "Did you know his father was terminal at this point, like hospice terminal?" And I was like, "No." She goes, oh, "Did you know that Tim wrote wrote a bull one time?" And I was like, "No." And I was I was trying to actually get word to Tim, going, "Dude, I wasn't trying to be, you know, I wasn't trying to be autobiographical by any means. I mean, that was just a." But he kind of took it in that same way of like, "Dude, this is just so meant to be." And I heard that his quote always was that, because um, he didn't like the, the father thing either. He was going on that time in his life. But he said, you know, my rule always was that, look, if that emotional stuff wasn't going on, would I still cut the song? And he goes, yeah, I would, I would cut the song. So because I, it felt really weird all of a sudden. It was like, oh, and especially his father thing. It was like, man, I, you know, because his father had been ill for, for a number of years. But I guess he had taken a, taken a turn uh, recently. And so... Anyway, so in the first time I heard it on the radio, um, it was really, I tell you what, when I, when I did it, I, there was actually a small window. Um, Bob Kingsley invited me to play a country radio seminar. And it was me and Jeffrey Steele was there. And um, it was like this midnight guitar pull. And I actually played that song kind of for the first time there. It was nothing but radio people in the room, nothing but you know, like these 125 of the guys that, that basically run American country radio. And I, that was kind of the, the public debut of the song, and I played it, and, uh, man, there were people coming up to me just like going, typical, what's he going to release? What was I? I was like, I don't know. But I kind of knew then, I knew then, you know, it was like, wow. I mean, there were people swarming me, and I was like, wow, this is really going to be. And then, I, of course, you heard on the radio, and... and uh, it's, it, it has been and continues to be a, um, that was a song where you just kind of, even from the first, you just kind of tried to stay out of its way, and I'm still kind of trying to stay out of its way. There's still things that happen with it and go on with it. And um, what do you mean? that's the song. I've got a couple of songs, but that song and Believe are the ones where, and this is my, this is kind of my real watermark. When you got a 300 pound country dude coming up to you, you know, this is not a guy that talks about emotions, right? I mean, you know, when you got a 300 pound you know, just just blue collar, salt of the earth guy coming up to you with tears in his eyes, and a lot of times they can't even—they don't even know how to talk. They just go, "Man, that 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 song, my my daddy, thank you." And that's all. That's that's as much of the conversation as they can get out. But their eyes are so full of emotion and stuff, and you can tell for them that's really going out there. I mean, that's really. And that's when it really, you know, that's when it really hits home, and it still does. And there's still people, there's still people that, uh, heck, we had an intern at our, at our office 
uh, you know, it's a 20 year old kid and, and um, her family, all that happened during the time they lost her grandmother and stuff. And she just stopped me one night and just told me, you know, what it meant. And every time and her mom will still call her and go, I heard like you were dying on the way home the other day. I thought about your grandmother. And I mean, come on, man. That's just, that's, uh, you know, it really is. I've always heard that when people like mess with movies, they go, look, no, it, it wasn't their movie. After I watched it, it was my movie too. You know, it, it was, it's our movie too. And I always heard that concept, and that song really brought home the thing that it kind of turned into our song because people, you know, people took it into their lives and stuff. And it was really, um, you know, I mean, it's just really, you just get in your office and you're just writing and you're just doing your thing. And when something like that really happens, it really, it really kind of takes you back. And you also, you kind of have to forget that as a writer because you can't go around with that onus of what do the people need to hear today I mean that's the most horrible thing ever you really kind of have to forget that and just feel so blessed that you that you stepped right into that shaft of starlight for a second and maybe it'll happen again but man you can't it's hard to it's it's a it's a, it's a humbling and weird place and and um, it was great and I, I loved it but it was um it truly was a Truly was an amazing song. Very so blessed to be a part of that.